Hey there, I got my sidekick with me today and since I'm talking about him, might as well let him be in the video. Okay, so today I wanted to share with you guys my birth story or yeah, I think that's what it's called, my birth story. So, um, huh, okay, I'm just gonna like hop right into this. Um, my birth experience was, I, I hate to say it like this, but it was like traumatic to say the least. Now, I am a little bit of a drama queen. So, okay, I'll give myself, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll take that. But um, there were quite a few things that just did not go the way I thought. So um, around 34 weeks, 35 weeks into my pregnancy, I found out that I had um, gestational hypertension. Um, and when I found that out, it kind of um, threw things for a loop, like threw everything in a loop for me because um, they wanted to do all these different tests and all these extra things. Um, and as far as I was concerned, I was like, well, my pregnancy is almost over, so why is this a big deal? Um, it turned out to be a bit of a big deal at the end, um, but he's here and he's healthy and he's amazing and so, and I'm doing great. So, you know, I guess it all worked out. Um, well, it did work out, not it, I guess, but anyway. So I found that out around 35 weeks and they told me that after 37 weeks, um, I would be induced if my blood pressure continued to um, be high every time I came into um, the office for my weekly visits, for my weekly appointments. So um, at 38 weeks, no, 37 weeks, somewhere around there between, I think I was getting ready to hit 38 weeks. Um, so I was 37 weeks and like six days. Um, at that point, I got I went to my doctor's appointment. My blood pressure was really high, and so my doctor said that I was being induced that day. So um, she let me go home because at that point I had not packed the bag. I wasn't ready at all. Like guys, I procrastinated this entire pregnancy with everything. I never nested. I never cleaned up. Like I just did not do anything to prepare um, because I just I don't know. I don't know why. It just didn't hit me that I needed to be prepared, um, which in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't do all the extra because it helped me not stress. Um, I'm somebody that I easily like if I, I, I can get obsessive about something. And so um, I, I think in hindsight, it was really good that I didn't do all the extra things um, because I probably would have been like really overwhelmed and really stressed out this entire like pregnancy. But I wasn't. Um, and so um, hi, my baby. <laughs> um but yeah so um uh, she told me that I need that I was going to be induced that day and so I went uh, she let me go home to pack a bag because I didn't have a bag packed for the hospital so I went home I packed a bag um and at the time Tay was three hours away um and I told him like we both had this joke like wow when I go to this appointment she's going to induce me and you're going to be three hours away and sure enough he was three hours away, but baby, when I tell you that boy got back here in two and a half hours, less than two and a half hours, actually, I don't, that boy flew. Um, but, <laughs> so, um, my, um, his parents came and picked me up and they sent me to the hospital. Um, and when I got there, um, I had to, you know, get an IV and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I got an IV and the nurse put the IV in this arm. This is my left arm. I usually don't get IVs put in my left side. I usually get them put in my right, but I was like, whatever, you know? So she put it in my left, and I guess for whatever reason, it didn't take or something. Like, I don't know what happened. Anyway, why did this girl pull this IV out my arm? I don't know. But she pulled this IV out my arm, and guys, I kid you not, I, I thought I was bleeding out. Like, <laughs> blood just shot out of my arm like, like a tornado. Like, it just everywhere and I got dizzy and I didn't pass out but I got very close to passing out now I'm not even a squeamish person but if, if I see it coming from myself I immediately go to like the worst possible situation right so at this point I'm thinking that like oh man I'm going to the upper room right okay so I told y'all I'm a drama queen right so I'm dizzy I'm I'm um I can't breathe, you know what I'm saying? Because like, I, did, I mean, granted, there was a lot of blood. Like, my sheets had a lot of blood on it and stuff like that. Um, but it probably wasn't nearly as much as I was like thinking in my mind. Anyway, little man, he started to panic as well because you know, I'm panicking, so he's panicking. And um, next thing I know, like five nurses rush into the room, a doctor rushes in, and apparently his heart rate was slowing down. 
Um, so he was in distress. And I was in distress because I was basically trying not to pass out, right? So um, they put me on, they put an oxygen mask on me. They flipped me over um, because they're trying to get me to breathe, right? So they flipped me over. So I'm on my forearms. I wish I could show you guys. Like I'm on my, my forearms like bent over trying to breathe. And next thing I know, mm, this lady, this doctor checks my cervix. Now, <laughs> I can't even describe how checking your cervix feels. It feels nothing like a pap smear. A pap smear, you're prepared. Um, you know, it only goes for so far, but a cervix, cervix check, it seems like they're trying to put their whole arm up inside of you. Baby, I just started to cry. Like I just, I, I, and they're like, you have to breathe. You have to breathe. No, I don't have to breathe. I, I, no, I just could not, I could not process life at all. Right. And then I'm freaking out because there's like five nurses that have rushed in here. There's a doctor that's rushed in here. And I hear you guys saying that he's in distress. So now I'm crying because I'm like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my baby? You know, like you guys aren't explaining to me what's going on. You're just doing stuff, which in hindsight, I'm so glad they did that because I probably would have freaked out more if I actually understood what was happening, but it still was like really stressful. Now guys, mind you, I was in the emergency room at the time. I wasn't even in, like I hadn't even been processed in for labor and delivery. So I'm in the emergency, in the emergency section of the labor and delivery ward or whatever, but I hadn't gotten to my labor and delivery room. So this is, I, I'm not even, this is just like pre stuff, right? So that happens. Okay. At that point, what you talking about? Hmm? What are you talking about? So at that point I was about three, no, I was two centimeters dilated. Um, they said I was really close to three at that point. So, um, after they get me stable and everything, um, they take me to, oh yeah. So after they get me stable, I move over into an actual labor and delivery room. So I get put into there and, um, you know, I'm just chilling right now. Mind you, at this point I started to feel contractions. Now I didn't realize that I was progressing by myself as fast as I was. Right. But I was actually progressing. I was actually like, had they, and I had not been induced yet. Like this was just me naturally coming in there. So, um, I probably would have had him anyway at that time, or maybe like a couple days after without being induced. But I was induced, so whatever. But um, so I finally get into the labor and delivery room and um, the contractions are hitting me. Boom, boom, boom. Now over there in the ER side, they actually gave me two shots of some kind of drug to stop contractions because I was contracting like every two minutes or every minute. Like, and they were just like, oh my gosh, like what's going, why is she contracting so much? Guys, that shot did not work. They gave me two shots and it never worked. So I'm over here in labor and delivery and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? Because I'm contracting back to back to back to back. Okay. So after I finish this or, or you know, after I'm experiencing all this, you know, the first thing out my mouth is, okay, I need an epidural, you know, like I, y'all have to help me. So, um, when I get the epidural, everything's fine. Um, it, the epidural was, was, was it's not painful um you feel a pinch when they put it in that guys like like i said you see i almost passed out just seeing a, some of my blood so i'm not a needles person if i say it doesn't hurt that bad it doesn't hurt that bad i went over there to uh to, i mean i got my epidural and it feels like a pinch they do one pinch and then after that you just kind of feel tugging and like coolness but it's not pain Okay, it's not pain. So if you want the epidural and you're afraid it's gonna hurt, whatever like that, it doesn't hurt. Um, it, it, it actually hurts less than the IV. Like the IV to me hurts more than that. Um, so after I get the epidural, um, they check my cervix again and I'm three centimeters. Again, I have not been induced yet. They haven't given me anything to induce me. I am naturally progressing on my own. So, um, also, something I didn't know about C-sections. Now, another thing, I did not plan on having a C-section. So, um, I know that in the title of this, I talk about that, like it says that I'm the C-section, but up until this point, I did not think that I was gonna have a C-section, right? So something that I didn't know is that when you get an epidural, they put a catheter in you. Now, I was terrified, right? Because I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is gonna hurt. But I had the epidural. So the catheter, actually, you don't feel it. It doesn't hurt. Um, 
like I'm trying to I, I, I can't even remember what it felt like because I don't think I felt it at all like it happened so fast that I was just like okay whatever so um the catheter does not hurt but you do get a catheter um because when you get the epidural after that you can't move like you can't get up and walk around and all that kind of stuff so they put a catheter in you just to you know help you eliminate um your urine and everything so um so i got the catheter and then after that they started to um give me pitocin now i get pitocin right and all of a sudden i just start contracting a lot back to back to back guys that epidural i might as well not have had an epidural because it hurt so bad um, it felt like, it felt like my worst period cramps times 10. Like, and I think the reason why it was so intense is because I was having them back to back to back. I wasn't getting a break. Um, and then Tay was looking at the monitor and he was like, and he was, he was trying not to say it, but I could see on his face when I was having like a really big one. And then sure enough, I would feel it and it would just like knock me out. So they, they gave me an oxygen mask again. So I had the oxygen mask, but I was struggling guys. Like I'm, I'm crying. I'm like holding on to Tay, like, please help me. Like, and he's like, I don't know what I, he couldn't, there's, what could he do? You know? So, um, with the epidural, you have like a little button that you can press to give you a little bit extra like boost or whatever if you need it child it didn't matter I was pressing it no I don't think I felt anything like it's, it's as if I didn't have an epidural like I just I can't think of another way to describe it um it was really tough like I'm not gonna lie it was really tough um but uh let's see so after that happens or you know after I'm like getting this Pitocin what's going on baby huh what's going on um so i have the pitocin or, or they're giving me the pitocin they're giving it to, they're trying to give it to me slow but my contractions are coming fast so they're just like at a loss right and so um they they end up stopping the pitocin because they're trying to give me a chance to like recover and i'm not i wasn't dilating anymore like i think i stopped dilating around i think i got to four centimeters my mom mistaken i got to four centimeters and then i didn't dilate anymore um and so at that point i proceeded to start asking for a c-section like i was just like please i can't do this like i can't do this but at that point there was no reason to give me a c-section like there was no medical reason why like besides the fact like oh, okay she's in pain but they didn't have to give me a c-section so they weren't you know they told me no so maybe I, I was in labor for about 12 hours no 13 hours i was in labor for 13 hours and um around our i want to say 11 um they started noticing that again he was in distress um so and and my blood pressure was high and my heart rate was high um and his heart rate after i would have a contraction his heart rate would drop so they got really concerned around hour maybe 10 or 11 and at that point they gave me the option of like, okay, if you want a C-section, we'll do one. Because like a couple of times, like several nurses had to rush into the room because his heart rate had like just plummeted, right? And um, of course, I'm stressed out, right? Like now I'm officially stressed because, okay, you told me I can't have a C-section just because I'm in pain. I, I can take that. What I can't take is something being wrong with him. So now i'm distraught because even though i asked for a c-section i was really hoping to be able to push and so and and then when you tell me something's wrong with him now i'm scared so i was i was really nervous i'm not gonna lie i was nervous going into the c-section but say and i talked about it and we agreed that, that was the best thing for him and it was important to get him out before the contractions just stressed him out completely so um or stressed him out more not, not completely but just stressed him out more than what he was already stressed so um so we decided to do the c-section so the anesthesiologist came back in there and he numbed me um it 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 i felt like a little bit of a pinch but it didn't hurt um i was numb like i was completely numb. like i could not feel my legs like well actually i could feel my legs but then when they told me to do stuff with my legs i realized i couldn't actually feel them like so i don't know how to explain it but it's like i knew my legs were there but i couldn't do anything with them so they're like lift up your leg and i in my mind i was lifting my leg but when i looked down my leg didn't go anywhere so i was numbed up good honey like no games played so um i uh they 
wheel me into the oh or room or wherever they do the c-section at um and i was so nervous because tay couldn't come in yet um i had to go in first and then they bring him in after so i went into the room and um they moved me over into the next table now i'm at this point i'm really terrified right because i've never had a major surgery i've never had surgery before in my life um I honestly thought that with a c-section you they put you completely under but because I had the epidural they didn't have to so um I I I was just a ball of nerves guys like I'm not even gonna lie I was just like really nervous about everything and I didn't know what to expect I didn't do any research really on c-sections because not that it was out of the question for me but I just assumed that because my pregnancy was going so well and everything that I wouldn't need a c-section so it I just didn't really do much research on it um, but anyway, I was in the room, they switched me over to the actual OR table, um, and then t I think at that point Tay comes in. Now, something that I didn't realize about C-sections is that, um, even though I was awake, the medicine they were giving me made me sleepy and made me loopy. So, I was awake, but, like, I was not in and out of consciousness, but I was, like, in and out of it. And so, um... I, I just remember being really sleepy and really cold and I remember hearing the doctor saying um is her leg supposed to be moving like that because my my I kept curling my toes because I could feel my toes so I kept curling my toes or whatever but I I wasn't in pain I just I guess it was like a nervous tick or something and I kept moving my arms even though my arms are strapped down I kept moving my hands and so they were like you know just try to lay still I guess they were like nervous I was feeling pain but I, I really wasn't so um anyway they cut into me which i never felt she told me that she did it but i never felt it which is a good thing obviously you don't want to feel it um and uh the next thing i feel is like pressure and tugging like and i was like oh my god what's going on? <laughs> what's going on what's going on and so like you know we could, like i I wasn't expecting to feel anything like you know so when I felt the pressure and the tucking I was like what the heck but apparently that's normal so for those of you that are getting c-sections just know that you are gonna feel a little bit of pressure and you're gonna feel tugging like you will feel pulling and you have to think it's because they're pulling the baby out and then they're gonna pull out um I think they pull out your uterus and stuff like that like they they have to check to make sure like everything is good on the inside so um so yeah you're gonna feel like pulling and tugging and that's really all i felt it wasn't painful it was just really weird it's weird to be awake while someone is pulling a baby out of your body like <laughs> i don't even know how to explain how else to explain it but it, it's it's weird to be awake for that um so yeah so they got the baby out and i heard him cry and i was like oh my god he's so beautiful guys i couldn't even see him like <laughs> they have a curtain up so you so because I, I didn't want well I don't know if you're allowed to see but I didn't want to see anything so they have the curtain up or whatever but like I'm just sitting here like oh he's so handsome he's so he looks so good and so the anesthesia was like can you see him and I was like oh no and like <laughs> but he sounded so good so I was just like he must be handsome like duh <laughs> but um so yeah so Tay got a chance um Tay cut the cord um and Tay was the first one to hold him which was really nice I'm so glad for that um and then they brought the baby over to me and I just started to cry y'all because my hair was not done now again I said I'm a drama queen but I was so upset because my hair wasn't done and I was like I can't believe he's gonna see me with my hair looking a hot mess like even now my hair is not like my hair is not done like this is a wig my hair is not done underneath it so but oh well like this is real life son so anyway but um i was so upset guys i was so much out of shape about my hair not being done and all that everybody in there was just dying laughing at me because they're just like really that's what she was worried about but like i i really wanted him to see me like looking cute or like i don't even know why it matters but anyway so um i got to hold him um well i didn't really hold him but they like put him close to me or whatever like that and so it was really nice and he, uh, he was just so beautiful I mean he's still beautiful but like when I first saw him I was just like oh my gosh he's so beautiful blah blah so um that was the whole c-section experience um after they after I left for after I had the c-section they closed me up and everything like that I went into this recovery room it's it's not like it's not a labor and delivery room it's not like where you go and um like recover for the next few days it's just it's a whole different room and I was in there 
my blood pressure was still a little bit high and my heart rate was high but um i didn't care i didn't care about anything because at that point they let me hold the baby oh so we did skin to skin and um I breastfed like I, he was on the breast for the first time and I didn't care what happened to me what was going on I did not care so I did not care what happened to me I didn't care what was going on I was just so happy that I was holding him and that I was breastfeeding it didn't like nothing else mattered right nothing else mattered so we were in there for about an hour my heart rate was still high like I said my, my blood pressure was still high um, and they did they gave me a couple things to like bring it down and stuff like that and of course they that's when they started giving me pain medication so um i didn't feel any pain at that point but one thing i will say is that when um when they wheeled me back to my this, my room so they, they wheeled me back to the labor and delivery room because my actual recovery room wasn't ready yet so i had to wait in there I was still in and out of consciousness at that point like I guess the drugs they give you are so strong that I was still like knocked out so I actually ended up falling asleep it taste says I was holding the baby but I don't remember holding the baby um like I don't remember holding the baby after I left the recovery room um but apparently I was still holding the baby or still holding him I don't remember that I remember going to sleep because I was so exhausted I was so tired that I just could not even function anymore um so probably like two hours later maybe they um was it two hours later? yeah it's probably like two hours later I, we had to wait a minute before i got into my actual recovery room so they take us to the recovery room as i'm getting there i get incredibly nauseous like as they're wheeling me in to the point that i had to stop them and and let them know like hey guys i am going to i'm going to vomit like i can't and um so apparently I experienced like motion sickness or whatever after having the C-section or after having like all those drugs plus C-section blah blah blah. So um so yeah I just remember being incredibly um, nauseous so we had to wait for like 10 minutes before they could even get me to the next floor to put me in my recovery room. So I finally get to the recovery room um and I'm in there and I'm just like spending time with him and it was so awesome um and then after that so um they leave the catheter in you I think for like 12 hours I can't remember how many hours it was but anyway I remember that when it was time to take the catheter out it was because they were ready for me to start walking again right so they wanted me to walk they wanted me to move so someone comes in in the middle of the night like four o'clock in the morning and she removes the catheter it does not hurt like I was so shocked be, and, and I was like bracing myself and then I was like oh my god I can't brace myself because if I do she might not be able to pull the catheter out so I was so nervous right so I was so nervous about this um this whole catheter situation right and so um so she she pulls it out it was a breeze it was nothing right so I was really grateful for that but when it was time for me to get my behind up lord have mercy okay so basically what happens is you know the nurse comes in there and she helps you get out of the bed because up until this point you know you've probably gone i mean like i know for me i went through 12 hours of labor with the epidural so i had the catheter in then and then however much time it was until four o'clock in the morning whenever she took the catheter out so i had the catheter in for a good minute and i hadn't moved in a good minute so um when she when, when it was finally time for me to get up it was such a struggle for me to to like slide to the side of the bed hang my feet over and what they do is they tell you to you know put your feet on the floor st stop for a minute and then stand up so i put my feet on the floor and i feel like i can't even feel the floor so i'm like oh my god am i still numb like what's going on um so then she helps me get up and i'm just like oh my gosh like i felt like the weight i felt i, I felt gravity like i literally felt gra i felt like everything pulled me down right and I was just like this is not gonna work this is not gonna work my incision hurt so bad like I I, I mean I'm not gonna lie to y'all like I'm sorry I see a lot of people like say all this flower and roses stuff on the internet I don't have time for that it hurt okay it hurt so bad when I took that first step it was like the weight of the world is on my shoulders like I can't even explain it in any other way it was it was so it was such a challenge it was such a challenge and so i made that first step and it was probably 10 steps to the bathroom 15 steps to the bathroom um so i make it to the bathroom um and i you know i i, I didn't go so i i guess my bladder was already empty from the 
from the catheter so I didn't actually go to the bathroom so um I get all the way to the bathroom I sit there for probably like 20 minutes I don't go I come back um to the bed but it wasn't a big deal they just want you to go within I think like six to eight hours something like that they want to make sure that you're going it might be less time than that I don't know um but it wasn't a big deal I hadn't gone right then so after that um what happened after that oh after that I walked back into my bed um and from there everything was kind of smooth sailing um one thing I will say is that ask for medicine um ask for the pain medicine they may not give it to you like it, it, until you ask for it like there are certain ones they give you at any time but um I had Percocet and ibuprofen and if I didn't ask for it I don't think they would have given me the Percocet because they probably thought that I was like managing pain well because I was moving really well like even though it was painful I was moving because I was like I know that this is what's gonna get me home um if they don't see me moving if they see that I'm like struggling or whatever like that they're not gonna want to send me home um my blood pressure was still pretty high that was something that I was still struggling with while I was there and I actually had to stay a little bit longer because of that um but besides that that really is my whole birth story um it was very trying it was very taxing but i am so happy because i have like the most perfect is that even a word no i have like i'm just happy i don't even know how else to say it but i'm really happy so even though like it was really extra the whole thing for me. okay if you guys hear music in the background it's because i have the baby in the swing take him home and it just became a whole like to do but um, I think I pretty much said everything I want to say about my birth story. So when I think back at my birth story overall, even though it was like really crazy, like it still ended up being perfect. Um, and not like, oh, you know, I thought that like all the crazy stuff that happened was perfect, but it's just perfect because like, it's, it was my experience, you know, and I didn't go into it with everybody else's fear. I went into it, you know, really ready to trust myself and just trust the process and things were able to happen the way they happened without me feeling anxious like i never felt anxious or sorry i'm on my phone but i never felt anxious or worried or anything like i i just i felt that way when situations arose but i didn't like walk into you know the delivery room or whatever feeling stress or anything like that so um like overall i have to say that like my delivery it was a success even though it was like really crazy and there are a lot of things about c-sections that people don't tell you like i had no idea i was gonna have a catheter i had no idea that i was gonna feel um feel anything um after my c-section i did have the shakes for a little bit um like i was like literally trembling like this um and it lasted probably for about four or five hours maybe where i was just like constantly shaking like this like and i wasn't cold i was just constantly trembling um i think there were a couple of other things that i wanted to mention let's see the catheter the shakes um falling asleep pressure let's see oh um after my c-section i noticed that i had a lot of muscle weakness and it's not just the weakness that you have on your stomach y'all hear him he's in the swing but um so yeah it's not like um just like abdominal weakness that i experienced um I, every muscle that i have seemed to be really weak my butt muscles were weak my thighs were weak my arms were weak i think he's using the bathroom y'all i just changed his diaper okay <laughs> but um yeah so he i i had weakness literally everywhere I also experienced a lot of swelling and something that's really cool was that after your c-section they put these things on your legs um i don't know if it was after my c-section or during it but anyway they put these um things on your legs that basically massage and compress your legs um so that helped with the swelling of my actual leg itself but my feet were still really swollen for probably like another week and a half after my um delivery the last thing that i want to mention is coughing sneezing um and laughing okay <laughs> If you need to do any of those things, make sure that you hold a pillow against your incision. I wish I would have known this because literally like maybe like five minutes after I got into my recovery room, I started coughing and I thought that I was going to split open. Like I literally thought I was going to split open and all my insides were going to fall out. Like it's so painful to cough. It causes so much stress on your incision area so if you have to sneeze if you have to cough or if you are getting ready to laugh or think you're gonna laugh or somebody says something funny whatever put um, a pillow over your incision area and hold it to that area while you're laughing coughing whatever because that's gonna like it's I don't know if it's just the, the pressure or if it's like 
I don't know what it is, but the pillow helps with the pain. And honestly, I was doing this trick. Actually, I'm still doing this trick because sometimes when I cough or if I laugh like the wrong kind of way, my my incision area starts to like kind of hurt a little bit. Um, so yeah, the pillow trick is a lifesaver. That's the last thing I want to say about this whole birth story and all this kind of thing. But yes, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, let me know in the comments below. Like, tell me about your birth story. Um. Now that I've had my own experience, I'm interested in hearing about other people's. That's something else, like before I um, had the baby, I did not listen to other people's birth stories. I just didn't want to be afraid. Like I did, I did not want to be scared. So, um, so yeah, but I'm open to hearing people's stories now. Did anybody else have like a crazy C-section story or whatever? Um, and, but yeah, so if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe um, and hit the notification bell so you guys can see when I'm having more videos and when I put my next one up. And until next time, I will talk to y'all later.